Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, just something small and vloggy. I've got loads in the pipeline, loads of videos already done that just need finishing, editing, you know, rendering, uploading, etc. But I've um, had way too much on. I felt really under the weather the last few weeks, feeling like I'm on the verge of starting with flu. And then on top of that, sorry, I'm trying to strip a wire here. On top of that, I've um, changed my PC. I've had no choice because my old PC started failing. It started giving uh, warnings about the uh, water, uh, the cooling pump. And it's a sealed uh, unit, it's sort of unserviceable, although I'm sure with time I could actually um, hack it apart and modify it, retrofit, um, you know, a third party uh, cooling pump, you know, a water pump or whatever it is, and modify it that way. But that PC is so old and long in the tooth, it needed replacement, it's needed replacement for the last four or five years. Um, I finally got around to doing it, uh, well, I mean, I've had to do it, no choice, I've had to do it sooner than I wanted to really. So the net result is with feeling ill and having to do all that, it took me the whole week, kid you not, as well as trying to do my job. And my job's been, you know, Simon's been, the person I work for has been accommodating in terms of, you know, my PC's former job. So he's been like, don't worry about it, spend as much time as you need to get it all just right because obviously you want a secure development environment. Um, so I've virtualized everything, um, got a virtual XP set up there for all my old software development stuff, some of the Lynx stuff code blocks stuff for the GP2X, um, some of the Delphi stuff, some Delphi projects and things, C++, um, you know Visual Studio 2008, it's an old version, I could upgrade it to a new version but uh, obviously I need to buy a license for that. Anyway, so long story short, I've been really super busy, I have not had a minute, I haven't I just have not had a second this week. Uh, one of the things that did arrive this week is this from Vince. Now, if you saw, if you watch my mate Vince, it's a channel you should watch. He's a really nice guy. He kind of reminds me of me to a degree. I'm not being big-headed because his channel's huge, so he's better than me. But what I mean is he reminds me of me in the sense that he has the same sort of approach, uh, not giving up an inquisitive mindset, wanting to understand something. No matter what the fault is, he'll keep digging and digging and digging until he learns something from it. And uh, like me, he very rarely is not able to fix something. And if he doesn't, he revisits it. People give him advice and suggestions where to look and he revisits it and he learns some more. Uh, and he's teaching at the end of the day. You, you learn a lot by watching his videos. Um, so yeah, he is, I've got to admit, and I'm just saying this because he's a bigger channel. I'm not trying to suck up to him because he's a bigger channel. I really like him. He's a really likeable person. His channel is fantastic. It really is. I hope that he gets to a million subs. He's over five. Is it five hundred thousand now? I think it is. It's, it's crazy how much it's grown in the last year. But you know what? It's kind of expected because he does all sorts of variety of things. Anyway, this is one of the uh, products he had on his channel. He fixed a load of these, and it was just a little. Um, I don't think what it was now, a transistor, an op amp or something for the audio output. Um, it's interesting just watching him fix those and how he, you know, um, diagnosed it and how he fixed it and he fixed a bunch of these. It's three or four, five, I think, that he looked at. So I was after a, a decent, just really cheap alarm clock. Now, Blaupunkt is a good make. These, are, if you watch the video, you'll see inside they're really cheaply made. These, it's Chinese, you know, throw together lowest cost. Uh, possible quality parts and things but you know what this is just what I wanted something small that can sit on the bedside cabinet that's got an alarm and he overlooked this he did say he didn't realize I had an alarm uh, and a dab radio I don't have a single dab radio in the house so just something to wake me up in the morning um, the sound's not going to be fantastic through this but it's going to be acceptable as an alarm clock so I paid uh, Vince, uh, you know, some money for postage and stuff there. Um, he also sent me this, and I mentioned this ages ago. I was going to buy it off him, Alone in the Dark, for the uh, CD, uh, 3DO, not CDI, 3DO. Fantastic. So it's one of my favourite games that I used to play a lot on the PC, but never got a chance to play it on the uh, 3DO there. So I've got that now as well, thanks to Vince. So I'm super appreciative of that, because that was kind of like a donation to me. I'll have to pay you back one way or another, but I'm very, very pleased to have that. Thank you ever so much. <laughs> and the other thing he sent me, he said, do you want a watch? And I was like, yeah, actually, I don't wear a watch at the moment. So he sent me uh, one of the Casio watches he fixed uh, previously again on his channel. So, yeah, it's really nice. I like it because you've got the little, uh, you know, old style LCD display at the bottom. It's, it's a cheap watch. It really is. But you know what? The condition of it, it's all right. Anyway, so here we are with this, the content of this vlogish uh, video here. Um, it didn't have a battery flap this. It was one of the ones that was missing. I was like, oh, don't worry, don't send one. He went, oh no, I'll make sure it's got one. So he sent me one of the ones that he's got spare. It's a black one, but it doesn't really matter because you don't see it from the, the, the front anyway. But I'm not going to be using batteries. So if he, if he wants that back to make one of the others complete, just let me know, Vince. I will send it back because I don't, honestly do not need it. 
um, but it was very good of you to send it. So you can see out my odds and ends uh, box here of connectors and things I've chopped off from things in the past, you can see I've got a little uh, DC ball jack here and it is just the right size for that uh, DC jack there, it's marked 6 volts DC. So uh, the other thing I did is I bought this from eBay, a cheap Alba power supply. I went looking for 6 volt power supplies, this one's only 600 milliamps there, 6 volt DC. I'm going to snip the end off here, uh, we'll fit this one. We'll use a bit of heat shrink to uh, you know, join this up onto there. Um, so the only thing I need to do here, and this is a really boring short video, is like I say the purpose is just to, just to show you some, tell you what I've been doing, why there aren't so many videos just at the moment, I'm still a bit under the weather. So the battery goes negative, positive, then the positive here goes to that negative, and then the charge comes across here, that's the positive, which goes to the negative of this battery. So it goes like that, it kind of snakes down there, does that make sense? So this is the uh, furthest most negative contact, and if we put the in continuity and test the centre pin there, nothing. And if I push it right in and touch the little spade on the outer edge, we've got a short, but the centre point isn't. That shows us that the sensor tip is positive. So I've just cut the connector off that power supply and I'll go back into that container to be reused for something else at some other point. Uh, this is the thing, it's like juggling connectors, taking one connector off, putting one connector on. Um, so I'll strip that back a bit as well, we'll just strip the shields. Uh, just strip the plastic uh, coating off the ends of those as well. I've got some heat shrink here, it's not going to be the right colour, it might be yellow or green or blue, but you're not going to see it anyway, it's, uh, it just needs to be there just to protect these as we solder the things on, join them up. So you might be wondering, why did I go and buy a power supply like this, an old one, instead of a brand new cheap one? Well, it's because those new ones, uh, they're not the same, this one's got a transformer in it. Um, and I'll be honest, the quality standards back when these this sort of thing was made, they're pretty good. You know, they'll have a thermal fuse in it as well as a normal mains fuse probably. It's relatively safe. I'm not sure I would like the idea of fitting one of these really super cheap, you know, you buy them from AliExpress a pound or some or two pounds, uh, you know, a six volt uh, one amp or something like that. I don't want it plugged in behind the bed you know, overnight for long periods of time. So I've gone with something old school, you know, Alba. Probably came from a phone or something like this, or a, I don't know, a stereo or something in the 90s, probably. So that power supply is plugged in. Uh, you couldn't really electrocute yourself like this because the voltage is too low. It's like 600 milliamps. But if we uh, just hold the wire on one contact and press the other onto the other, uh, but if we measure that, can you see that 9.44? Now there's no load, but uh, anyway, we'll give it a go. Where's it going to happen as I blow it up? Uh, let's just measure that again. Yeah, so measuring that there, you can see we've got 9.4 volts. It's, uh, it's not very accurate, but then there's no load. And I think there's going to be a bit of regulation inside this unit anyway, uh, hopefully. Yeah, so the stripe, so the white stripe on this cable is, is our positive. That's going to go to the centre pin. So I slide a couple of pieces of uh, heat shrink tubing uh, over these here. I've just twisted these strands together there. And um, we'll get some solder if we can. It's in a knot here, look. And um, we'll just uh, tin these up with solder and iron. Yeah, there we go. You can see we've got some solder on there. So we need to do the same thing with this side. Uh, this side's not got a covering on this here in the outer connection, but I think this should be okay. And a little bit on there as well. So on continuity test, let's just work out where the uh, braid goes. I'm guessing it's going to be the outer part here. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, so the braid goes to the outer part. Let's just uh, test the uh, white wire there. I'm guessing that's going to be the centre of here. We're going to have to stab this in. You can see I'm holding the probe here on the white. You see that? And we'll just stab it in the middle. Yeah, there we go. Uh, hang on. Yeah, we've got a short there. Just check that. No, there isn't. So, our white is the centre, and I want to go to the white stripe on here. There's lots of different ways of doing this. Sometimes, some people hold the wires like that side by side, twist them together, and then solder them. But the end, then you end up with a lump. What I always do is get lots of solder on them like that, put them si hold them side by side, uh, try not to burn yourself, and uh, bridge, you know, join them together. As, as you heat, you just get one big blob of solder across the two. Ow, that's hot. 
uh, and you can see that we've got a really nice solid thick uh, join. Let's just cut back a little bit of that. Can you see they're not they're not really level? We need to just snip a bit off that there, like that. There we go. Uh, and in fact, before I do that, uh, I'm just going to put a thicker piece of heat shrink over Ashley. Yeah, it's a bit like when you're putting DIN connectors on things, this. You've got to think about the sequence that you do things, otherwise you can mess it up. So I'll just disconnect that from there again. There we go, pull them off. Slide the heat shrink over here, over the two. Like that. And then we can slide that over the, them both when we're done. Where's the white one gone now? Right, white one. Yep, that'll do. It's a nice, thick solder point. So you see, what we can do now is... Heat that with heat shrink to those shrink, slide that over the two and shrink that. So hot uh, 150 degrees here. It's a bit fast on the airflow. I can't what I've been using it for previously. Anyway, shrink these down. And then we'll slide the heat shrink over the two like this. Over that whole area and then just shrink that. So yeah, you know, it would look better if it was black. You can buy black, it's mostly black heat shrink you'll find, but uh, some of the packs come in multiple colours like the ones I've got here. I probably do have some black uh, this thickness actually, but I'm getting lazy to go and try and find it. Anyway, this will do the job. You ain't going to see this, it's right behind, you know, tucked behind the thing. So, the moment of truth, are we going to kill it? Let's hope not. So, plug that in. And see what happens. Yeah, it's not coming on, is it? There's no switch on it. It's a bit worrying. Yeah, we just need some that that screen is really nice actually, I like that. Can you see look it's it's a bit intermittent. We need to get some contact clean onto that uh, DC jack or the solder point. Can you see look of a bender? It's all right. That makes me think uh, the DC jack might be an issue. I don't know whether that's something Vince considered looking at when he looked at these, but that is definitely, look, it's all right now, definitely the issue with this one. So I'll get some deoxit there, but I really do like that screen. I know it's super cheap, but uh, yeah, I'm impressed. Um, I think that had the right time on as well. It must be picking that up from the radio. Yeah, we've got a bad connection there on that socket without a doubt. If I pull it out a little bit, it starts to work, look. It's like it's not happy when it's all the way in. Oh. Yeah, that power connector, I need to do something. I don't know what. But as you can see, well, sort of see, it does work, it's just not reliable on the power, is it? I'm about to blow. There we go, I'm about Asian to blow, network, yeah. working fine. I'm about to blow. I'm about to blow, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, uh, it is just one of those things. Uh, I suspect the other ones he's got are going to be all right. It's just my luck. I always get something that's not quite right, no matter what it is. Can you see? You've just touched this. I'll zoom in a little bit. Yeah, that pin just watch. It's that centre pin. It's loose. And it's not the solder point. I've checked. I've just had this board out and had a look. The connector's all right. I think what's happened is it's, I don't know, it's had a break. So this has had another fault. It's not just the audio side of things that Vince fixed. It's this uh, DC jack as well uh, which explains why when you just hold this together zoom back out a bit when you uh, push the power connector in here you can see it doesn't come on you've got to mess around with it and it isn't just a case of the cable I've measured the voltage but it's not working the voltage on the board is 9 volts but I think the switch part of it is perhaps um, well it's that centre pin isn't it the centre pin is the issue. I think what I might do is just remove the heat shrink from here and solder this straight into here actually. I might just feed it through the um, oh, I'm not sure there's a couple of holes here let's just see if we can um, 
Yeah, and you can see the heat sink uh, came off as well. <laughs> That's unfortunate. He stuck a couple of heat sinks on there. I'll secure that back on. Uh, I can't quite see the holes, but you can see you've got a couple of holes here. You could pierce something through there and stick the power supply directly in there. There's not a lot of room to work with here, though. Yeah, we could do that. I think I might do that, actually. Can you, can you see just down there? I could uh, puncture that little hole and stick the lead straight through the back. I think I might just do that. Um, ideally, you'd be better off replacing it, but you know what? I don't want to spend lots of money on this and stuff. I don't want to go away and try and size up a connector for that. I just want to power the thing with the uh, PSU, so cutting that hole out there, um, you can see it's, it's got little uh, things, look, you can snip out. Probably can't do it from that side. I could certainly shove something sharp in there and uh, prise that out, I think, and uh, just fit the PSU internally. Yeah, you can see, can you see that's just pushed through, look. Yeah, let's do that. Totally unorthodox, but... Okay. Yeah, it'll just save me uh, messing around with the darn thing. Well, that took me a while to work it out, but I thought I'll desolder this connector, and you can see what's happened here. The pad has just come off the pin. So, I think that's the centre pin, actually. I think that's why it wobbles from this side. So it fractured all the way around. So I think, um, where does it actually join? Does it join all of this extended area here? It must do, it can't go anywhere else. So I think I'm just gonna uh, scratch some of this off here and just join uh, a wire to that actually. I think that's what it is, I think that's what's happened here. It's just one of those things that um, you could easily miss, you know. I don't, I don't think Vince has noticed that because it's not like I've forced the new connector in. The connector's the right size. Um, I might even just be able to bridge it with some solder, actually. Let's just see if get some solder there and then see if we can. There we go, join the two. Look. Let's try it again, see if that works. There we go, it's working now. So, so that's all it was. Uh, the clue was that pin was loose. You could see it was just touching it, it was moving around. And I was like, well, the solder points look good. And I reflowed them and it looked good. And it looked like the solder points were fine. Only when I desoldered it, realised that the whole pad came off with it. And I thought, hang on a minute, that's what it is. That's going to be the answer. So, uh, yeah, there we go. Fantastic. So I've got the screws back in there. Uh, I did not expect that to be so eventful. The screen looks weird on the camcorder, but to the naked eye it looks fantastic. It's uh, super clear. Makes a really weird noise when you first switch it on like that. Not sure if you all do that, but it works fine. So the other thing I'm doing while I'm here is putting a button for the backlight. Uh, and that's just a push button so that I can literally grab from behind the thing and just press hold that button in to have the battle light on just to see, you know, in the dark what time it is because it's uh, driving my wife nuts. So there was a hole already there for that. Uh, well, not for a button, for something else. It was a similar size to that. And I've widened it more towards where my thumb is over here, if that makes sense. Widened it this way in order that I can fit the push switch there. And as you'll see, it's pretty tight but with a little bit of manoeuvre, there we go. You can see, the board goes back in and it's not shortened or anything. The two contacts are there. So all I need to do is join two wires. So I've got some uh, gray wire here, the same as the wire that's in here. Uh, and incidentally, the back light is this single little connector here. So all I need to do is just cut into uh, one side of that wire and feed off, you know, from one end of it through to one side of the switch and from the other end to the other side of the switch. Uh, and then, like I say, I'll just be able to hold the button down to be able to enable the back light temporarily to see what time it's in the dark. And it won't drive my wife nuts, um, lighting up the entire room. Uh, and it's pretty bright, that's the thing. You know, if you've got one of these in your bedroom, as I have next to the bedside table, uh, on the bedside table, it's uh, super bright. So I've just been uh, tinning up those uh, connections there with a little bit of solder. I think we've got more than enough on those now. And join one end of the wire to one. Yeah, it could be a bit tidier. Same with the other one, let's uh, just tin the uh, wire up first if I can. Just tin the wire up. There we go, look at the bottom there. And uh, the same with the uh, the other one. 
So I mean I could use some heat shrink tube in here to make this uh, super tidy but it's not that important, it really isn't. So then if we cut into the wire for the backlight connector, so we just need to just pull one of these out, you can separate them a little bit here, look, not a lot. Um, it's the same kind of wire looking at it, and just literally snip it like that, and uh, join each of our wires and our switch to either end here. I'll use a little bit of uh, heat shrink tube in here, um, because this bit obviously will be floating on the inside, I wouldn't want these too short onto anything. Get our two pieces of heat shrink on there. Might need to just pull this back a little bit in order that I can slide the heat shrink over properly. There we go. So slide it over like that. This one could be a bit tight. It would just about reach, I think. Yeah, there we go. So we'll just uh, tin that wire up. Yeah, that's that one done. Oh. Can join this side up first because this one's the fiddlier one. So let's just pull one of our wires over. You could twist them around each other. That's one thing you could do. Anyway, you can see we've got a little blob of solder there holding those together. So that's that one done. Let's do the same with the other one. That should do it. Yep, that's okay. So we can just slide the heat shrink over. I'll go and get the hot air. Uh, get it so that it's in the middle and shrink those. I'm just going to just move this, there we go, so I can see exactly where the centre is in order that I shrink it in just the right spot. Anyway, confident that's okay now, so we'll reassemble it and go and test it. So I haven't screwed it back together properly yet, I'm just uh, loosely uh, assemble testing it here. So can you see on the screen there? It's got the time, and if I press the button on the back, yay, the light works. So yeah, best of both worlds now, wife will stop moaning about the light, and uh, if I do need to see the uh, time in the night, I can do. So let's get the last two screws in. So many thanks to Vince for sending this, I've been using this for months now, but I only just got around to doing that mod there. Uh, and thanks for the, the watch as well, uh, Vince, I've been uh, using that a number of months, no problems. Change the battery on it, the battery went flat about a month ago, but uh, anyway, I thought you found that interesting. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next video.